You're all right, Don. Yeah, I was just running out of things to say. <laughs> Over to you, Don. Yeah. Thank you. Right, good morning. Um, I haven't got any notes. Basically, I'm your press officer. I'm the guy that get the press in and get the media involved. And I think we've had quite a successful time. And this today has come at a rather opportune time. But let's not get carried away. Um, I'm a little bit pessimistic of what's got to happen. Now, basically, I'm not selling this. I'm not recommending it in any way whatsoever because I don't know if it works. But this is your future. It's a, it's a health drink. It won't make you sexy. It won't do you any good. You won't run a mile and you won't be able to ski with it. But this is your future if you don't watch it. It's a detox kit. Now, I'll leave it at that. Have a look. We'll give you some literature. This is your future if you don't watch it. Now, in 1999, I came to this conference and I said, the government is taking the piss. And everybody thought it was quite funny. I explained to them that in 1994, Tony Newton was planning to drug test the whole society, that they were aiming for coercive abstinence, as in the United States. I complained to him that the government was... Um, following and emulating the United States and we would end up with chaos. <laughs> I don't think it would be unsporting for me to say, told you so. At the moment, the government is encouraging employers to use drug testing. It's part of the 10-year strategy to reduce accidents in work and absenteeism as a result of the drugs use and we might say alcohol, but I'm not interested in that. Now, the situation is many major companies now <coughs> insist on pre-employment tests, test positive, and no job. They then get you inside. You use one of these, and if it works, you get the job. Brilliant. But basically, now you're in the job, you're going to be random drug tested, and you get caught with it. What's the employer going to do with you? What's he going to do? Is he going to sack you? Is he going to put you into treatment? I haven't got the foggiest idea, but I can tell you, and this is on the UK CLI website, and it's drug testing, a bad investment. And this is the research from America. America's been doing it since 1950. It's nothing new. So basically, when we come to urine testing, how would it affect us when decriminalisation comes in. Basically, you'd be able, we are led to believe, to smoke a joint in the street. But if you get in your car, effectively from the very near future, you will be possibly drug tested. And if you test positive for illicit drugs, cannabis is the dodgy one, you will lose your driving licence and you do not have to be convicted. We've had cases reported to us over the last year of people who have been charged with allowing their houses to be used for the smoking of cannabis and reported to Swansea as drug users. And Swansea questioned the driving licenses. We've had a woman who suffers from pain she was on a restricted driving license for diabetes. DLVA wrote to her doctor, and one of the questions was illicit drug use. And because the woman had told her doctor, and people who are telling your doctors, you must be very, very careful, because the question was on there, illicit drug use, the doctor ticked cannabis. Now, albeit the lady only used it at night to smoke, to get a decent night's sleep. And who should deny her that? Swansea pulled her license for six months. And she has to show purity to get it back. Now, purity is spelled P-I-S in a cup. And basically, if she doesn't pass that test, she doesn't get her license back. 
So really be extremely careful. Decriminalisation, I'm not sure where we're going to, but I do know that the government is after getting the user and not the dealer. What good is it testing people going into nightclubs with electronic machines as Bedfordshire police are doing? So really be extremely careful, I warn you. I warned you in 1999, I warned you in 2000, I warned you in 2001, and I'm telling you in 2002. I don't want to stand here talking about taking the piss next year. So please, please look into your union if you are in work. Ask your union, what is their policy on drugs testing? Do they approve the infringement of human rights? Should an employer, and the most important one, if you are in employment, because that's where I'm aiming at, if you're in employment, ask your employer what he is going to do if he finds you positive for cannabis when Nurofen will show up as a false positive. Now, there I'm going to end with the point here. An employer, and I would like, if there are any media here, I would like them to ask the employers, what are your intentions towards illicit drugs use in your factories? It's alleged that you're losing 30 million a year as a result of drug use. What bollocks? That's word for word from 1988, United States, same figures. There is no research being done in Great Britain serious on it. But if an employer takes action against somebody on information or evidence that he knows to be faulty, he will lose in an industrial tribunal if he sacks people for using cannabis. So basically, I'm only here for a wind-up. I'm only here for a G-up. Please get out there and don't just sit here and say, yeah, 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 yeah. When you leave here, talk about it to people. When you see something about cannabis in your newspapers, email me and tell me, send me the bloody cutting, and we'll tear it to pieces. Or better still, write to your local editor and tell him. Okay? Thanks very much.